What is up my friends, you are very welcome along to our Leicester City preview here on Anfield Agenda. It is a massive game on Monday night, not just for our ambitions of potentially Champions League, certainly Europa League, but of course for Leicester City's survival in the Premier League. We are going to be live from 7pm over on our Twitch channel if you'd like to join us for the watch along. It is a huge, huge game. I'm expecting Leicester to really come and have a go. They have to at this point. They've only got three games to go in their season and they need to start picking up points. But of course, we're hoping from a wobble from those above us. So we've got to keep doing what we need to do, which is picking up our own points. Something has got to give... What's going to happen? Well, I'm going to do what I always do, my friends. I'm going to go through now and give you my predicted 11, my score prediction as well. Ask you guys to let me know your thoughts in the comment section. And again, if you haven't hit the subscribe button, please do. And also, if you enjoy the video, don't forget to drop a like. Look, we are being brought to you with all of our match day content with thanks to our friends at Circle. Not only are they the football sweepstakes game, but they have now recently launched their brand new product, Match 5 Millions, where you can match five numbers from five Premier League fixtures to be in with a chance to win one million pounds scan that qr code in the top right hand corner if you'd like to come play along with us you need to be aware it's a gambling product of course we urge you to always gamble responsibly you do need to be aged 18 years or over in a uk resident to play along with us and if you would like to get five pound in free bets when you deposit and place your first five pound in bets use our referral code anfield agenda all one word on sign up there you go. You'll also find the link in the description of the video. But look, let's get into it. So let's start off with the score prediction. I am expecting goals in this one. I'm expecting it to be a fairly open affair. Um, and I'm expecting it to be a bit nervy. So with that in mind, what have I gone with? 3-2. 3-2 to the Reds. Now, look... I don't, I'm not under any illusions that this is going to be easy. I think the best version of Liverpool has to show up. And yes, Leicester are where they are because they've been poor all season. But it is really, really, really down to the business end now. It is at the king power. I'm expecting it to be rocking. But I do expect us to just about get over the line. So I've gone 3-2. Let me know what you think. Now, though, we'll get stuck into the starting eleven. No real surprises with regards to the goalkeeper and the centre-backs. It is, of course, the great Alison Becker, Virgil van Dijk and Ibrahim Akanade making up the centre-backs. Now, in the full-back positions, again, you're not really going to get any surprises from me here. We have Robbo on the left-hand side and Trent on the right-hand side slash middle slash midfield slash whoever. But... It's working, so Trent there. Let's go with that anyway. As we move towards the midfield, though, this is where the real questions start to come. What will we go with? Will Jurgen Klopp go for Jordan Henderson on the right, Curtis Jones on the left, and Fabinho in the holding role? We know that we've got no Thiago. He's obviously on crutches in Barcelona. We've got no Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain. We've got no Naby Keita. James Milner is an option, as, of course, is Harvey Elliott. But I've gone with... Fabinho in the holding role, Cody Gakpo to come back into midfield. Well, look, I'm really just trying to find a way to get the four attackers on the pitch here. And this is what Klopp did previously. So, who am I to argue against the manager? So, I'm going to put Cody Gakpo into midfield and Curtis Jones, for me, will start on the left-hand side because he's been so effective in the press. Now, look, you can look at this another way as well, of course, and go, Jordan Henderson could be required here. Jordan Henderson's experience, Jordan Henderson's leadership... But ultimately, I feel more comfortable with the with the players that I'm going with for this particular game. I want the energy, I want the intensity, and I think we get that from Curtis Jones and certainly from Cody Gakpo. So for me, my midfield, Fabinho in the holding role, Curtis Jones on the left, and Cody Gakpo on the right. Now, of course, we move to the sexy part of the pitch now. Diogo Jota should be back for this one. We know he was nursing some bruised ribs, but that time away over in Barcelona with the rest of the group, I'm sure, has given him a chance to recover. And weirdly, I feel more nervous when Liverpool are are you know longer between games. The shorter we are, I think, the better we seem to be. When we have prolonged breaks, when we have breaks away, it usually ends up with us coming back with a bit of a disjointed, low-energy performance. And again, we have no wiggle room now, so we've got to get it right. So, let's look to the top end of the pitch. Who have I gone for in the wide areas? Well, I've gone for Lucho on the left, and of course, the great Egyptian king himself, Mohamed Salah, on the right-hand side. I did wonder whether Klopp would go with Jota for just the, the technical nous, the understanding of the system. But also, you kind of look at Diaz's energy levels. And again, he will be an important part of this press. So for me, makes sense to bring Lucho back in. He had a rest from the last game, started the two previous. Obviously, the other game came a bit quick for him. So he got some minutes off the bench. I'm sure, again, he'll be fully rested up and ready to go. And on the right-hand side, of course, we have the great Mohamed Salah. Even in a season that's been up and down from, he is still putting up very, very, 
very good numbers. Uh, and it's great to see him playing with such a smile on his face and full of energy again. So the only decision left is who goes through the centre. Have I gone for Darwin Nunes? Have I brought in Diogo Jota perhaps? Obviously we know Roberto Firmino isn't quite ready yet. Fingers are crossed by the way that we do get to have a proper goodbye to Bobby. You know we've got the Aston Villa game as our last home game of the season. Um, I think that's the last home game of the season. Anyway we've got the Aston Villa game coming up on the 20th. Are we away at home in the last day of the season? Do you know what I'm waffling here? Either way I hope Bobby's fit by the time the last game of the season comes around because it'd be lovely for him and Milner to actually get their goodbyes on the pitch. Maybe even Alex Clay Chamberlain if he can if he can be I don't know fit enough to play Kade don't really care in all honesty don't really feel like he deserves the big goodbye but Bobby Firmino and James Milner certainly do they've been stalwarts of our success on the Jurgen Klopp so for me uh, yeah I hope we can get Bobby on the pitch because you know it wouldn't feel right saying goodbye to Bobby but we we do have the 7-0 to look back on if we want to get Bobby's you know wonderful moment in front of the cop before he leaves Adding the seventh in that game would probably be, be good enough for Bobby. So look, we move on now to the striker. Who have I gone with? I've gone for Darwin Nunes because, well, I just think he's he's got to get some consistency and he's got to get some form and I'd prefer to try him through the centre. Somebody pointed out to me that at Benfica in his first full season, he did okay numbers. Then they moved him completely centrally in the second season and that's where he started to explode and his numbers started to really show. So let's see what Kloppo's thinking is. Will he go for Darwin Nunes with the centre or does he potentially see Darwin Nunes as another option on the left? He can play on the left, no doubt about it. But for this, why not get all the attacking threats on the pitch? We know Gakpo's going to help with the press. We know Salah will track back and help. We know Diaz will do everything. So let's just get Darwin in those areas of the pitch so he can do the most damage let's get early crosses in from wide areas let's mix up the attack as well and if needs be between Gakpo and Darwin Nunes you've got two very good players are holding up the play and allowing runners to join from midfield whether it be Jones or whether it be Trent of course coming in uh, it's it's good and these are good headaches and I'm sure Jurgen Klopp is very grateful to have the amount of attacking options that he has even without Bobby available. Now that is pretty much it for me my friends but as always we will be live as I said on Monday night. Hope you can come across and join with us. It's uh, three games to go in the season before we have to say goodbye to the lads for the summer and I don't know about you but the summers are always very very long. It's great when we talk transfers and stuff but for me it's all about the Reds match days and, and getting getting to enjoy it with you guys. So again let me know do you agree my start in 11 in the comment section let me know your thoughts on obviously Leicester I think it's an absolute disgrace that Leicester are in the relegation zone with the squad that they have um they shouldn't be anywhere near it to be honest with you they really shouldn't and again I want you guys to keep a little eye on Castagna as well during this game just let me know your opinion on him he's been linked with a move to Arsenal should Leicester go down but I also think Liverpool could do worse than maybe looking at him as a versatile option, a potential cheap versatile option to come in and give us some cover of fullback. So again, keep an eye on him in the game. Let me know what you think. And that is it for me. I will catch up with you real soon. Take care. Lots of love. Enjoy your weekends. And I'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye.